it's Lorraine again, back again to show you the third part of the four-part series on how to create beautiful foil papers to dazzle your artwork. Now, in one of the other videos, I did mention that I was going to do a bumpier paper on the third part of this series, which I decided not to use because as I began to work on it, cut it up and adhere it to different projects that I thought I might show you, I found that it really didn't hold up the way I wanted it. So I thought, let me develop something that's a sure paper, foil paper that you can depend on, that's very versatile and can be used in a lot of different ways. And that's what this paper does do because it is a thinner, flatter paper. It can be used in any project that you have, collage, mixed media, uh, journal covers, journal pages, and so on and so forth. Now, just before I start, I want to show you some of the things that can be done. You can take this paper and cut it, and this is what I liked about it. It's flat, it's thinner. You can cut it into freeform shapes. I used a puncher to punch out these different shapes here that you see in front of you. And then these shapes can be used on top of a journal page, on top of a journal cover, or whatever mixed media piece that you might be working on along with other papers and even fabric. And they can, of course, be painted. They don't have to be silver. And all you're going to do is, you need a backing, you will need your foil, and we're going to be painting the dull side today. We need Elma's glue all for stronger bondage. We need your paint, your brushes, you need a brayer just to flatten the paper out. And that's really about it. Very simple process and we're going to get going with it right now. You're going to paint the paper and you can give it two coats if you wish, but you don't always have to do that. On the white paper that I showed you a minute ago, I did have to do that for better coverage. You can see how nice this is covering. It's covering very well. And the paint sp spreads very well. So that's all you do. You do that. You let it dry. If you want to give it two coats, that's great. I'll see how this dries up. I may give it another coat. I may not. I'll let you know when I get back. And it'll take just a minute for this to dry. And then I'll show you how you manipulate the paper so that you will finally end up with what I showed you. Alright, so here we are with the finished dried foil paper and I did only give it one coat but I did let it dry overnight and I would suggest that you do the same thing because if the paper is tacky when you begin to crumple it you're going to have some problems. So and all you do then is take your paper, take your foil and begin to crumple it. And you can see what I'm doing. I'm just turning it around, crushing it. Don't ball it up. Don't put it into a great big ball because if you do, you're going to have trouble when you go to pull it apart. It, it might tear. or you just won't be able to get it apart as well as you would like. So you just keep working it, working it. Pull it out a little bit if you want and re-crush it. And turn it over and crush it a little bit more. And I do have here the brayer. If you don't have one, by all means, just use a rolling pin. Anything that's rollable. And just roll it out. Roll it out. In fact, I think it would be helpful if I put a piece of um, 
wax paper on top of it. I think it would press it out a little bit better. See, you do that. The next step is to take your paper, your backing, and you can pull it out a little bit to match the size of your backing if you want to. It certainly is pliable enough to make it reach the the backing that you've cut out. So I'm going to do that. I like to cover the whole thing if I can. If you have if you have any trouble with it, just leave it as it is and you can cut it down later to meet the the edges of your backing. But it's not necessary. All right. So there I just about had it pretty good there. And then as I begin to adhere it, I can even pull it out a little bit more if I want to. Still wanting to crush it up a little bit too. So you've got to keep playing. You've got to play with it and play with it and hopefully enjoy what you're doing as you go along. I like to take my time with these things because for me that's part of the pleasure is to just enjoy the process. Okay, so now what you're going to do is just turn it over. You have your Elmas glue all, and it is the heavier glue than the regular school Elmas glue because you want better bondage. Now all you're going to do is you begin to dab. Use a soft brush so that you can get in a lot of the crevices. Okay, now I'm going to shut my camera for a minute. I'm going to finish doing this and then I'll be back. Okay, so I'm finished doing that. Now what you're going to do is take your backing. And I've said this before too, I put the adhesive on the foil first because if you don't and you put it on your backing first, the adhesive is going to dry, be dried by the time you finish putting the Elmas on the foil. Alright, so you have your adhesive on. Put your foil on top of your backing. Press it down. And then I'm going to roll over it one more time. So that this really adheres well. And I will be back. Bye. Here we are with the finished piece. Nice and dry. Remove the books and I did trim the edges of the paper. I just wanted to talk a little bit more about my intentions of what I'd like to do in part four. We can work on a wood block or a canvas or a card or a journal cover or maybe a journal page and that you would get enthusiastic about it. So for now I'll say goodbye and I hope I see you again. Thank you for watching. Bye now.